You've got to see this stripped down version of Windows 11. It is absolutely amazing. This is known as Tiny 11, and if you've got an older PC or a newer PC with a limited amount of RAM, then this is definitely for you. The creator of the image, NT Dev, has been able to get this up and running on systems with as little as 384 megabytes of RAM. And one of the other things that's great about this, it only takes up about 8 gigabytes of storage. So if you've got one of those newer, cheaper PCs with like a Celeron that you can pick up for $100 to $150 from Walmart, then you might want to try out Tiny11. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at and installing Tiny11. If you're not familiar with this, basically it's a cut down operating system based on Windows 11 and it'll run on as little as 384 megabytes of RAM. I've actually seen somebody booting this up on 200 megabytes of RAM, which is absolutely insane. So what we're looking at on screen right now is a $120 laptop that I picked up from Walmart. This is a Lenovo low-end laptop. It's got 4 gigabytes of RAM and it's non-upgradable. This is the stock operating system that came pre-installed and we basically max out all of that 4 gigs. There's no way to upgrade this and unfortunately 4 gigs of RAM just isn't enough for Windows 11. We're just sitting at idle and with all of the bloatware installed, we're basically maxed out. But here's the same laptop running Tiny11. As you can see, my CPU utilization is way down because we don't have all of that bloat running in the background, and we're only using 1.9 gigabytes of RAM right now. Now there are some drawbacks here because there's a lot cut out of Windows 11, like we don't have the Edge browser pre-installed, and I know a lot of people don't like using it, but we do have access to the Microsoft Store, so as soon as we get this installed, we can actually head over there, download Chrome or Firefox, it's really up to you. But I'll tell you what, I've been messing around with this operating system on this low-end laptop for the last couple days, and this is how it should have ran out of the box. I mean, it's definitely a snappy system now. We're not running out of RAM, just sitting there at idle. And this laptop is now more usable than it ever was. I've actually got a review video coming up with this specific model. At $120 with Tiny11 installed, I think this would be well worth it. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to install Tiny11 on your system. There's no system requirement, so if you've got an older PC that, you know, doesn't support the official version of Windows, Windows 11, Tiny11 will be installable on there. It doesn't require TPM, there's no RAM requirements, there's no CPU requirements, so you could get Windows 11 up and running on an older system that really just didn't support it in the first place. Or my personal use case with Tiny11 would be installing it on these cheaper laptops that you can pick up for like $100, but they only have 4 gigs of RAM, which is usually non-upgradable. There's only two things we need to get this installed. First one being a USB drive. I recommend a 16 gigabyte drive, but an eight gig will work. And a functioning PC, so we can actually download the image and install it to that USB drive. So if you're ready to get Tiny11 installed on your PC, let's go ahead and get started. Installation is pretty straightforward, but you will need two things. Obviously, we'll need the Tiny11 ISO, and there's a few to choose from. And we'll need Rufus. This will allow us to kind of flash that image to a USB drive and successfully install it on another system. And uh, real quick, NTDev is over on Twitter. Leave a link for this in the description. It's got a few screenshots here running on 384 megabytes of RAM. And another user managed to get this installed with only 200 megabytes of RAM, which is absolutely insane. Now I'll tell you what, with 400 megabytes of RAM and 200 megabytes of RAM, there's not much else we're going to be able to do on that system without it, you know, really slowing down. But it's still impressive it even booted. The Tiny11 image is being hosted over on the Internet Archive, and you will need an account to get in here and download it correctly. From the ISO image, there's the B1, we've got B2 with no system requirements, and B2. I would go with B2, no system requirements, if you've got an older CPU or something like that. This is the one that I'll be using, and if you download the ISO from the Internet Archive, it's going to be a bit slow. So there is a torrent available, and this is going to be much quicker. It's going to download all three of those versions for you, or you can pick and choose once you load the torrent up. But once that's downloaded, we now need to get an application that's going to allow us to flash the Tiny11 image to a USB drive so we can install it on a separate system. I'm going to be using Rufus for this really easy to use. Just go ahead and download as making this video is 3.21. On my desktop, I've got the Tiny11 image and I've got Rufus. We're just going to go ahead and start up Rufus. We need to select our USB drive. I've got a simple 64 gigabyte SAN disk drive here. Doesn't need to be this large. Boot selection, disk or ISO image. We're going to leave it right there. We want to select the image. Mine's right here on my desktop, Tiny11. 
partition scheme, we're going to go with GPT. There's not much else we need to do here. We're just going to go ahead and start, but you need to make sure you are flashing to your USB drive or micro SD, whatever you want to flash this to another system with. Once you're sure, we'll click OK and let Rufus do its thing. This is going to create a bootable Tiny11 USB installer. When the installation to the USB drive is finished, it should look something like this. So we've got all of our files here to go ahead and install Windows on another system. All we need to do now is remove our USB drive and move over to the PC we want to install Tiny11 on. So I'm going to go with this low-end laptop here. We'll just plug that USB drive into one of the free ports. And while we're booting our system up, we need to enter the boot menu or the BIOS. This key on a Lenovo laptop is F12. So while it's booting up, we're going to tap this a few times. It'll bring us to the boot menu. From here, we can choose which drive we want to boot from. Other manufacturers do use different hotkeys. It could be F9, F10, F2, or even delete. Just do a little bit of research so you can get to that boot menu on your system. But once we're here, we're going to choose that USB drive to boot from. And this is going to boot us right into the Windows installer. We're going to choose our language. And now it's time to choose a drive to install this to. Now you could actually run this from an external drive if you wanted to. But I'm going to be installing it to the internal drive of this laptop. It's only got 128 gigabytes of storage. And from my menu here, I can see that that's the only drive listed. I've got a few partitions. I'm going to go ahead and delete each one of these partitions. But you need to make sure you're installing to the correct drive. If you have several hard drives or SSDs in your PC, just be sure you're installing to the one you want to. Now you can see I've just got this single partition. We're going to choose Next, and the Windows installer is going to do its thing. All right, finishing up. It'll automatically reboot, and I'm actually just going to remove this drive as soon as it reboots. That way we don't boot from that USB again. Now it's going to boot from the drive we just installed Tiny11 to. Windows is now getting everything ready for that first boot, and uh, I mean, it's self-explanatory. If you've ever set up any kind of laptop, we're just working with Windows 11 now. It's just kind of a cut-down version. Initial setup is super easy, just like any other Windows 11 installation. We're going to choose our location, we're going to choose our language, keyboard layout. You can sign into your Microsoft account if you want to. Usually I bypass this, but uh, once we've got all that set up, it's going to boot us directly into Windows 11, or Tiny11. So I've got the setup finished. We're now going to boot into Tiny11. And as soon as we boot in here, I'll go ahead and pull up that task manager, just so you can see what's going on. This should only be using around 1.8 to 1.9 gigabytes of RAM. And uh, that's with Wi-Fi and everything going. And it only took up 8.1 gigabytes of storage on my internal 120 gigabyte SSD. Now, like I mentioned, there's no browser installed, but we do have access to the Microsoft Store. So if we head over here, we can go ahead and download whichever one you want. You could go back with Edge if you want to, but I'm going to go with Firefox. Chrome would be another good choice, but uh, it's listed right here. You actually don't even need to sign in to the Microsoft Store to download it. Go ahead and get this. And now we've got a full-fledged PC here. You can go through, install Steam, install your games if you want to. But, uh, you know, having that browser is very important so we can download other applications. Now, once we start loading this up with more bloat, of course, it's going to start eating up a little bit of RAM. But if you can keep this thing nice and clean, you could have a quick little system, especially with these cheaper low-end laptops that usually only come with around 4 gigs of RAM. And, you know, you just can't upgrade it. This is soldered to the board. I was hoping we could upgrade this one here. But like I mentioned, I will have a full review with this laptop coming up. And with Tiny11 installed, I do think it's worth $120. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Links for everything I mentioned are in the description. And if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. Like I mentioned, I've been messing around with this for a little while now. And I think I'm going to install it in a couple other lower-end PCs that I have laying around right now. But like always, thanks for watching.